champion, Blink and you'll miss him, The Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs> Neil Robertson taking the high road, Ronnie taking the low road because of that Weber fracture in his ankle. He's still having to be careful with it, but uh, this is just the kind of occasion that we hope is going to bring out the very best in the world's number one, Neil Robertson, and number three, Ronnie, uh, John, and your mate Dennis. I can tell that you're both champing at the bit in there. We certainly are, Hazel. A very good afternoon, everyone. What an atmosphere once again at the Alexander Palace. And it doesn't get any better than this. The world number one against the defending champion. Thank you, champion. ladies and gentlemen. The first frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. And that's what they're playing for, that beautiful Put your cameras trophy away, there. please. Thank you. So Ronnie did win the toss, so he will get the semi-final underway. I just detected a very determined Neil Robertson as he walked into the arena there, uh, JP. Yes, he's certainly going to have to be today. He knows he's playing against the benchmark. And, you know, Sullivan has been in fabulous form this season, one of the champion of champions and the UK. And I do feel as if, whilst he hasn't been at his absolute best here so far this week, Ronnie O'Sullivan, there's a big match in him somewhere. He's definitely going to hit top form at some point in this tournament and he'll be hoping it's today looks like uh, hot water there that uh, Ronnie does bring out I don't know where there was a maybe just dipped the tea bag into it for a couple of seconds but keeps his hands warm I've seen him do that quite a bit over the last few years Look at the Reds have gone one over either pocket, but it was such a good break off shot. And the first opportunity <coughs> falls to Ronnie. Yeah, it's quite ironic that, wasn't it? We watched Robertson the other night against Ali Carter. Never made a mistake in the safety department at all all evening. First shot of the match. Right over each hole. a bit of an edgy one because he potted the red into the left side of the pocket he didn't miss the pack of reds there well, what a situation he's left with here with the red over the right corner yeah. looks like he's going to go for the uh, I would think it would have to be the brown if he's to cover the red that's over this right corner pocket. Brown ball. And that's it. No use playing for the green because he'd leave that on. But he might need to have a couple of attempts at this. This is awkward. And he'll have to keep playing it because he can see the black, so the miss will be called no matter how close he gets. Foul. And a miss. I think that'll be going back. Ronnie O'Sullivan one. Neil Robertson four. Well, Neil's having a good look around, but uh, I would definitely have this back. back. Yeah. Yeah, Neil's just checking up with his cue in there just to see even if Ronnie flicks off the brown. He's got to make sure he hits it on the left-hand side as we look down the table because if he hits the right-hand side, he could still leave the red over the corner. So this has got a great degree of difficulty. Even getting the spider in the right just place without fouling the, one of the balls is difficult enough. It is, spider's going in now. Okay. 
Brown again? Brown? Yeah, brown. The miss. Well, the miss call, but he won't Neil be taking Robinson. it this time because he can get to the reds over the pocket. That was a must hit on the brown to cover things. Well, Ronnie had the first chance. Ran into trouble. What can Neil Robertson do? One. Now that blue needs to be able to pass the yellow. And it must be pretty tight. Yeah, I think it does go, but it's always one of those awkward sort of shots because you think about the yellow instead of concentrating on the blue itself. You think you've got less of a pocket than you have got, but he's experienced enough to know that. So one smooth pot required. See how close he was to the yellow. That's how precise he had to be there. I wonder, can Seven. he reproduce that form that he did against Ali Carter? Because he was awesome, John, wasn't he? Yeah, that's just the, the one nagging doubt, isn't it? When you've had a peak performance like Robertson did the other night, and it was a peak performance, he was almost flawless. To have to go back to work again so soon try and replicate that can sometimes be very difficult but the feature the other night Dennis of his break building was how accurate it was the cue ball under control but everything went into the centre of the pocket I mean he made a hundred break in the first frame and a <coughs> ball didn't touch the jaw 12 well look at that that's for the whole tournament 93% Neil Robertson 91 for Ronnie I mean in his match against Ali Carr, he was up at 98% at one stage I think it was Finished at 97%. I mean, that is incredible. Thirteen. As he played a match in the United Kingdom Championship late last year, and he was absolutely 20. phenomenal against Peter Ebden and then the following day came out to play against Graham Dot and in no time he was 5-0 behind it was a great 21. effort to get to 5 all but he got done in that final frame decider so Neil will want to make sure that he maintains that form that he had the other night against Ali 28. And the other feature about his play in the previous round was every single pot was going in the centre of the pocket. You know, sometimes the ball was going off either corner, but everything was going right in the heart of the pocket. Oh, look at this. Neil Robertson, 28. OK, he's covered that, but what an unexpected miss there. He just took his eye off that, just lost concentration for the moment. But this, this is a tough one that Ronnie's looking at up into the corner. He could possibly put the one that's near the, the pocket off the cushion, but he's going for the long run. No, no, no. It was close. Yes, yeah, so Tried to play it in a way, of course, that he'd be covering the red on the right-hand side if he missed. That was very close. Just caught the near jaw. And I think Neil can get past the yellow to clip this red in. So it hasn't gone safe.
one. Well, he was automatically coming up the table. I think the cannon was a bonus. Wow, what a bonus. That was going to be stuck near the top rail, that cue ball, I think. So to hit that red there the way he did, happy birthday. Eight. He was automatically going to come back up the table because the red was quite thin, but when it cannoned the red. No. Lovely when that happens, and no reason why he shouldn't take the opening frame now. Yes, I bet you he can't believe he's back at the table so quick after missing that red that he missed. And he'd be pretty determined not to miss this second opportunity that he's been given. 16. Twenty four. Yeah, plant pretty straightforward. Twenty five. Quick glance at the scoreboard for Neil there. He'll know he's only a few pots away from securing this opening frame. Just the start that he was looking for. As I say, he looked very, very determined as he walked into the arena. He got a terrific reception. I mean, Ronnie always brings the house down, but 31. they give the Australian a fabulous reception here at the Alexander Palace. And as our old friend Ray Reardon used to say, JP, if you produce the goods on the table, the crowd will get behind you and just have a look at that crowd. Thirty two. That's the frame safe. Thirty four. You're looking at a player here. Well, he's made 35 centuries this season, but last season 39. he made 103 centuries, a record that might stand for a very, very long time. I know the players are playing more these days, John, but that was absolutely incredible. Yeah, phenomenal achievement. Neil had desperately loved to have been on this red just to completely finish the frame off. But that'll do it. What a shot. 40. Brilliant. Couldn't see enough of it to take it to the middle, but that's why he's renowned as probably the best potter we've ever had in the game. And also, it'd be very useful if he could make a total 47. clearance here. I'm a big fan of that. If you can do that in the first frame and keep your opponents off the table, take all the balls and keep him there in his chair cold. You can be pretty 48. sure that's what Neil Robertson's thinking about. Yeah, not quite the cannon 55. you wanted there. A little bit of a thicker contact on the pink would have been better. Still got a chance with this, but slightly more difficult. Cut back into the corner. 
56. He can afford to take the blue and still make the century. Look at that, right in the middle of the pocket that blue went. 61. Sixty-two. You'll have to take a black with the final red, but he'll be well aware of that. And he's doing what all great champions do, John. Uh, the number of times Stephen Hendry, 67. Steve Davis used to start a match with a century break. Yes, and I think it's even more important with the man he's playing 68. against. When you play against Ronnie O'Sullivan, you need to have a good start. Yeah, in fact, he was able to take a blue because he's now on 73. If he clears the colours, 73. it'll be exactly 100. So he didn't need the black off that final red. 75. Well, aside for that one inexplicable miss in the corner pocket early on, the rest of it, just like he played the other night. All balls into the centre of the pockets and pretty much flawless. Great start. Eighty-two. We've had twenty-three centuries in this year's Masters. Needles had three. Pin drop in Alexander Palace at the moment. I think that will change when this black goes in. Well, that was bad from the Australian. Ronnie had one well, chance, ran out of position, but what a way to finish the opening frame. Neil Robertson makes a century and he leads 1 0. Yeah, fascinating start because there were a couple of early errors from Neil Robertson before that very precise 100 break. Steve? Yeah, I mean, he sort of let Ronnie off the hook early on, but it didn't cost him. Uh, and I suppose that's the, that's the thing about the game. You, you've got to try and work out what's happening. The game he played uh, against Ali Carty didn't seem to put a foot wrong. That was an early foot wrong when he missed the red. Uh, of course, if he'd have stuck it up, and then Ronnie O'Sullivan had made a big break from that, we'd have been saying, well, perhaps he's a little bit more unnerved. As it was, he now looks fantastic. <laughs> John Parrott was saying uh, that it is a difficult thing to try and follow a peak performance. In, in what respect do you think? Uh, well, I mean, he, he played to such a high level, it's very hard to keep that going. I mean, we saw the way Mark Allen played in his match, you know, after coming down after playing so well against John Higgins. So, Sometimes it just depends. As I said, it's, it's important to get off to a good start with Neil Robertson, to sort of stamp his authority, to say to Ronnie as well, send out the signal, look, I'm here in this match as well. It's not the Ronnie O'Sullivan show. I'm world number one, and he's stating his claim straight away. And in fact, he's actually had a lot to say in the papers yeah. over the last couple of days, saying that he's actually wanted a crack at Ronnie for the last couple of, uh, well, few months, actually, because he got to the semis at uh, the World Championships, could have gone into a final with him. They was beaten by Mark Selby. Then there was the situation at the Champion of Champions and the UK. So he's almost champing at the bit, to use that expression again, to have another go at him here. Yes, and arguably, uh, Neil Robertson is the type of player running inside and doesn't want to play. You know, younger than him, uh, got attitude around the table uh, and firing for him, gunning for him. Uh, you, nobody likes that. And so from that perspective, you, it may be Ronnie who's got a few more questions to ask today than Neil Robertson. Well, I know who knows? That. I know that many of you settling down to watch this. Stephen Fry amongst you, uh, settle down to enjoy this. A banquet of snooker, says Stephen on Twitter. We quite agree, Stephen. Although I'm a little less excited about the prospect of Norwich City against Cardiff City later. But each to their own. Back we go. Thank you, Hazel. <laughs> Stephen Fry, what a wordsmith he is, John. And he loves his snooker. And yeah, not only loves it, he's extremely knowledgeable. He's all the champions and what year they won. 
can't get to the potting angle of the red that's to the left of the pink and reds for the middle. He just had a quick look to see if he uh, could possibly take a pot on and get on the blue and leave it safe, but it's just a safety shot, hoping to cover that red. Uh, has his judgment here. That looks very good. Well, I said it looks very good. He was concentrating on covering that red with the brown. He doubled this one towards the right corner pocket, but this is far from easy. This will tell us how Ronnie's feeling at the moment. This is a big test of your queuing, especially when your opponent's just started the match with a century. from Neil and not a lot of reaction from Ronnie after fluking that. Ronnie O'Sullivan one. Just a bit awkward with that red up the other side as we show you this fluke again and uh, well he didn't get on the black and if he hadn't have fluked it I don't think he would have left much there so Problem was, of course, he couldn't actually hit a ball colour either, so he couldn't leave the cue ball down there, and he had the black to play on. Got to be a bit careful with this one. He doesn't send it into one of those ball colours. Judged it well, and the frame back to normal now that that red's come back up the table. Neil's got an angle. Well, he can't see enough of that, so it's okay. Yeah, funny enough, that bump was quite <laughs> handy, really. The fact it's covered the right-hand side of the table because pink and black are stopping the escape down there. All the reds are covered. Yeah, if that cue ball had been a little bit to the right, he'd have been taking the loose red on the left. Stun shot for the pink. But I think he's going to have to go for this, John, because there's no easy safety shot. The one in the middle of the bunch. He did go for it, but he had no safety shot on there. I knew he was going to cannon into the pack of reds there. This is a, a terrific chance for a counter-attack from Ronnie O'Sullivan to respond to that opening century, John. Yeah, when he could play a little can on the reds and open a few more, as if he wants, doesn't have to, of course. The spread lovely at the moment, so choices. And this is where O'Sullivan is at his absolute best. Eight. Constructions of breaks. He'll work out the right way to go about it. Don't worry about that. Got a choice of three reds to go for, believe it or not. One in either middle, one in the pocket he's just leaning over. Nine. But you're looking at the greatest, well, you have to say now, the greatest break builder of all time. Overtook the great Stephen Hendry's record of 775 centuries. <coughs> Ronnie's gone ahead of Stephen. Fifteen. And this year, 16. trying to equal that six masters and that Stephen Henry has won. Ronnie's won five. Eight. 
Yes. Black pot. 22. The top right hand pocket, no problem. So Ronnie immediately trying to get onto this red. 23. And these really are lovely, the next four or five reds anyway. The table has played beautifully all week. In fact, there was a new cloth put on it after the match last night, but it looks just as good as the previous cloth. I know <coughs> Stephen Maguire was singing the praises of the table. 38. Said it was one of the best he played on this season. 39. Yes, I know Pete Godwin, the table fitter, was working very hard last night, make sure it was all up to scratch, and of course he had to measure it all out again, make sure there was no roll-offs and what have you. He said the floor's not the best in here, he was telling 46. me the other day, so it makes a, takes a bit of time to get it all right. Meanwhile, when he gets an angle 47. on the black here, generally you'd want to play this and play a cannon up into the pack and stay on the the loose red, but he may have come too far for that. Well, I think everyone watching at home and 54. everyone at the Alexander Palace watching here are hoping for both players 55. to play at the top of their form. And uh, Neil near that opening century break. Ronnie just making sure of the frame before he goes into the 60. little group of five reds. He only needs 63. the black, but he's got the perfect angle to open them up and maybe make his first century of the semi-final. Yeah, nice stun up here. No need to screw this. Ronnie needs to pop the black. Well, that is... 63. Very, very careless from Ronnie. I mean, the black was framed all. I mean, just make sure of the black and let the white take care of itself. You know, we see players miss pots when they're concentrating on a cannon, but, you know, he didn't really need the cannon. The black was enough. And that red goes to the middle pocket. He's not safe by any means in this second frame. Yeah, Neil's just looking to see that what angle he can leave to get the black and maybe try and avoid the cannon on the red. That's what he's having a look at. I mean, there's anywhere he can leave her. And of course, this isn't the worst chance because the three reds that are in a line next to the pink may be the bottom one pots there. So as you say, Dennis, it is a chance. One. I mean, he doesn't have to take the black. He's got a couple of points to play with. If the red goes past the black, he can take the pink and pot the one next to the black and then get it back on its spot. Well, it looks as if there's plenty of room for the red to go past the black, so the pink and nicely on that red. Black back on its spot, and he's got a real chance, and what a steal this would be, John. Yeah, I mean, it's purely a matter of which way you fancy this, because he's definitely got the angle to pot the black and avoid the red, I think. But if he plays the pink, he doesn't even have to consider that. Well, he can go twice across the table or just drop it in. You see, he doesn't have to take that red immediately, but he, he can only take another one pink, and then he's got to get the Seven. black back on its spot. He's just trying to reckon up the score to see what points he's got to play with before he has to take that black. I thought he might have played for the red next to the black off that pink there. Hmm. 
Now, can he pop this black and just avoid the cannon on the red? See, the funny thing is, the shot before Dennis, it looked absolutely perfect, didn't it? He's, he's gone about a different way, but he must be he must be happy he can get round the back of this without moving it. Well, that's a player cannon, so... Change of tack. 15. He's still looking at the scoreboard. Sometimes when you're out there, you're concentrating so hard, you struggle to work out how many points you've got on the board and what you need, but he's got to get up to a high-valued colour here. Sixty. Yep, he's on the black, and I'm sure that back red pots, he just checked it there, so if this goes in, and he's nicely on the red, there's a new favourite for the second frame. And this would be an absolutely massive steal. 23. Ronnie would be kicking himself in that chair if he loses this frame. 24. Black off the spot. It's all he needed. And to miss that and see your opponent clear up would be a major body blow. Absolutely perfect. 31. I know it's the best of 11, first to six, but what a turning point this could be. Well, they're there for the taking now. 39. Forty-one. Yes, he's not the world number one by chance, Neil Robertson. He knows the importance of these frames. It's not winning the ones you should do. It's nicking the ones you shouldn't. That's what wins 44. your matches and tournaments. And he knows the importance of this. Forty-eight. Fifty-three. And once again, this clearance has been immaculate. It really has. Fifty-nine. What a clearance from the Australian. He would have had so much pleasure out of that. Ronnie O'Sullivan at a break of 63, and he missed the simplest of blacks to secure the frame. But what a clearance from Neil Robertson. He now leads 2 0. Well, what a frame of snooker that was, John. I mean, Ronnie, he thought the frame was over, didn't he? And uh, he didn't need to split the reds, but it was an automatic shot. He just, but you make sure of the black and win the frame. It's one of those ones, though, Dennis. You know yourself, you play the shot automatically anyway. You play the correct shot, don't you? I just didn't fa fancy him missing the black. I couldn't see him doing that. He wouldn't miss that in practice all day. But it's just one of those things. And the situation, the way the ball's finished, well, Neil Robertson had plenty of work to do with it to, to sort it out initially, but what a great clearance. And when there's so little between the two players, Dennis, it's frames like that that can make all the difference. Well, I mean, just look at that determination on the Australian's face, and uh, it'll be very interesting to see how Ronnie copes with that. Uh, I mean, he's been fantastic for the last couple of seasons. Uh, Ronnie, he hasn't looked flustered, you know, but that will hurt, and he left to put that to the back of his mind and uh, start afresh. But boy, that was a tough one to take there. Makes this semi final even more fascinating, uh, John. Yes, and what we've had the answer for. We were wondering whether Neil Robertson would be uh, suffering any ill effects of that brilliant performance the other day. As I say, peak performance, but he looks like he's hitting the ball beautifully again today. He's right at the top of his game, which makes this a fantastic clash. But Ronnie, well, he's got to go to work again. Thank you.
Thank you. The third frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. break off from Ronnie that got to get this one really thin if you're hitting this one George could come into play yeah there you go it was a cracking break that had him a lot of trouble and Neil can consider himself very fortunate Sullivan just tapped the table there in acknowledgement of that fine safety shot from Neil Robertson. Now that, this was the shot where uh, he played the thinnest of contacts and John said he had to watch the jaws of the pocket but I'll tell you what he got away with that. A little bit of a stalemate because there's no way back up the table just yet. Yeah, that's opened the path purposely there to get the frame back to normal. And that plays a big part, John. You know, if you're playing at the top of your form and you do make a mistake and get away with it, what a difference that makes. Yeah. You can't need a bit of luck as well as being talented. It almost seems unfair when you're playing against it. Someone should be playing so well and getting a run of the balls, but that's the way it tends to happen. When you're playing well, you get all the rub you can get. Yeah, and there, the cannon on the brown has left Neil with a chance. If he slips past the brown, it's perfectly safe. Straight blue in the corner. Neil just had a little check to see where he needed to leave the cue ball for the one on the right hand side. A stun run through to leave that. And already. He's had seven Six. long pots in this match. And he's made them all. Neil Robertson, six. I'll make that seven out of eight because that was an unexpected miss from Neil. I like this shot. I like this shot a lot. It's just a fascinating tussle, this, because not only are the two of the greatest break builders of all time, you're looking at uh, both players have got an excellent safety game. Ronnie is as good a tactical player as the game has ever seen. Uh, 
And just looking at it with a red either side of the pack there, if he comes off a couple of cushions and lands in the pack of reds, he could quite easily leave a pot. So this will need a little bit of uh, studying. He may be that close to the brown that he, he can't get off the side cushion. He might just be able to go where he's pointing the cue there. I mean, my line's a bit close to the blue, but somewhere along there, and he might hit the red that's on the left, but that, I think that's what he's looking at, some sort of a s escape into the bunch. Now he's just gone twice across, and that's pretty good, yeah. There's a decent target there with brown and yellow. Got to hit this a bit thicker to get there. Neil didn't think he could on that shot, so he decided to use the green and once again played it superbly well. Excellent shot. Top of the table again from Ronnie. And this is what it was likely the night for Ali Carter. The situation every time he came to the table he was in all sorts of bother well he'd have to be very precise well he can just see this red past the blue by the looks of things yeah, but he's got to be very precise I think he might just be able to get through to that red past the black I'm not sure maybe not The one along the cushion is no good for Neil because the black's tied up. But he's got one up into the corner pocket past the blue. Might not be taking this on, but uh, now he's keeping things tight. I mean, I've seen Neil Robinson take them on <laughs> plenty of times, John. Yeah but uh, he didn't quite have the angle there to get behind brown and yellow so he just had to try and get the cue ball on the bottom cushion well that's what you call an attacking safety shot He's put the reds all in the open but the colours are not Ideal, the pink up the other end of the table, the black tied up, but just have a look at those reds. Yeah, what a safety shot that was. They went everywhere there. It's just a case of don't make a mistake now because I don't think there's a pot on that's easy anyway. And because they're so spread out, difficult to get away back to the book. That's what Neil's looking at there. There's a pot on, as John said, but he's trying to find a safety shot. I'm just wondering if he could land on a red, but I can't see a red he can land nicely on and leave it safe. I mean, he can play this red on here and try and get in behind the red that's on the top cushion, just drop it in behind it, but... Yeah, fraught with danger, that was. Yeah, he tried a very thin snick on that red. But as I mentioned, the pinks way up the table, black tied up, so he's going to have to do it with blues. And that's not the easiest angle to hold for the blue.
One. So, gets himself nicely on the red. This near the Three. pink spot, but we might see a good few reds and blues disappear here. Four. Yeah, real tricky situation, Nine. isn't it? Pink up the table, no good. Black tied up. This will be some break. Ten. And now he's got a power of the blue in. At least the brown's not on its spot, so he's plenty of room to go in and out of the bulk area and up past the blue spot. Well, he's run it around, but I, maybe he hadn't got enough angle just to go in between the yellow and green. But now 15. he's faced with a tough long pot. It's almost straight, I think, this red. Now, this is a key pot coming up here. You need to push that cue through dead straight. And he certainly didn't do that. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 15. I think it was the sh previous shot when he cannoned the brown that sort of annoyed him somewhat, but the green was a bit of a distraction there. Beautifully played shot that was, and he is. Great shot. Well controlled. Flick the red away. Fabulous. Yeah, Neil said he was looking forward to playing Ronnie. They didn't play Eight. each other last season, believe it or not. 2013 was the last time these players played each other. Which is quite amazing when you think about it. In fact, Ronnie uh, beat Neil 6 5 in the semi final of the 2013 Champion of Champions, but Neil had a 4 2 win in a European Tour event. But these are the ones that count you on, the, the big ones. Yep. And Neil have been encouraged as well by how far Ronnie missed that medium pot by. Didn't cue it at all well. So I'd be happy he didn't score any points, but he'll have taken just as much encouragement 16. seeing how far he missed it by. 17. He now can get on that red that's blocking the black for one corner pocket, but Ronnie, that long red, the, the, the green was just putting him off slightly there, but he didn't cue it very well. Twenty-four. Just trying to leave an angle on this black so he doesn't have to cannon those two reds that are on the top cushion. That's why I just had a little look there. Doesn't want to be having to bring them 25. into play just yet. So I left it nearly straight so he can play the run through and avoid the cannon on them. He's hitting the ball beautifully well today. One or 32. two unexpected misses. It's a uh, a semi-final in the Masters, after all. But his general striking is with a great feet. authority. Yeah, 
with four frames to be played before the mid-session interval. And he's well on his 40. way to winning the opening three. Still got a bit of work to do here. And what is he, 31 points in front? Doesn't have to disturb anything, really. He's got 41. an angle to drop on those two reds. It looks to be perfect to leave them for the right corner. He can just roll it, and I think he's absolutely perfect. That's all he needed. 48. Slightly further than he intended. It means he'll have to just be careful because he's got a cannon the other red now. Yeah, he can play a screw shot here and take the cue ball up towards the book area or on the blue. Where's that cue ball? Where's the white going? Oh. <laughs> Amazing. You could never see that happening. But it was because he didn't get on the two reds as he intended. He just ran a little bit too far. So another twist in this third frame. Mind you, this would be some clearance with those two reds on the top cushion. Even the first red. It wasn't as easy as it looked on the screen. I still thought he'd pot it. leave anything out for this uh, potting machine that we're watching. 94% is at at the moment in this match. That's very high indeed. As I mentioned earlier, he was at 97% in his match against Ali Carter, but he's let that run away. Four. I mean, that was such a good attempt. It was Banged in the middle pocket that green with a stun run through, and he's come the one place he doesn't want. He's been a bit higher, he had a chance on that back red. One of those situations where you don't really want to remove a red off the cushion, but you've got to to play a safety shot. So well, that's why he's chipping it back onto the other rail. Yeah, Robertson, four. So how do you like that for a clearance, Dennis? Well, Ronnie will be trying to bring the reds off the cushion. Neil Robertson needs one red and any colour above the green to leave Ronnie needing a snooker. He's got to be careful here because it's amazing. Two or three shots later, when the table looks like there's no clearance on, they start coming off the cushions that much. It's they're all in play, and you can be left open for a counter clearance. But that's a nice little flick as well. The brown there. Thin snick to take it to the middle pocket. I don't know if he can see enough of that, but but just a safety shot here. And a pretty good one at that. That's a clever shot there. Yes, very clever, very well played. And now Ronnie 
He's got a really tricky shot here. And because of that, he has got a chance of a long pop. Bit unlucky to cannon into the yellow there, because he would have covered this red if he hadn't have made contact with that yellow. Mm. But once again, he's missed the pot, but look where he's left them. This one, where he's got a chance here to get yellow and brown in play. Play the play off the reds, move them off the cushion, but try and get that yellow and brown back in play if you're going to make a clearance. Yeah, doesn't miss a trick. Oh, but the reds come up the table, and I think Neil might be able to pot it. Can't see enough of it to take it to the middle pocket. A couple of edgy ones from Neil Robertson. He's at the point where he knows two pots would give him a 3 0 lead. Didn't expect him to miss that. No, so that red sticking out, which we thought was going to be Ronnie's undoing. That clever little shot he played that nearly came off. One. Might pay dividends. Okay, that red behind the black is pretty tricky. But no reason why he shouldn't get position here for the other one. And like it happened to him earlier in this match, Dennis, this Six. would be a huge blow to Neil Robertson. He didn't have to play Seven. on the black there. He's still OK. He's got a nice angle just to stun this in. Doesn't want to finish straight on the last red. Just a little bit of angle, but keep your eye on the blue. Well, tough shot coming up. Really tough. And this one just as tough. He's got an angle. He'll automatically head up to the yellow. Thank you. That's finished awkward. He's having to bridge over the green. He was so unlucky there when you're to hamper himself. 20. When you're striking down on it like that, you get a little bit of unwanted side. Very unfortunate. Yeah, he'd have paid good money for a flick on the green there with the cue ball, wouldn't he, when it came down before. Just a flick on there would have made all the difference. put Ronnie in all sorts of trouble here if he judges his next shot. If he plays in behind the brown though he's got to be careful he doesn't send the yellow onto the green. That's what he's thinking about. And he's played it nicely though. Take that every day of the week. Good hit, but the snooker is definitely a bonus. Yeah, you're just trying to hit the ball full when you're trying to get out of a snooker, but 
had a great picture of the swerve shot there. Just wondering whether he's got the big target behind the brown here. You see Neil playing the swerve there. Good shot. Well, he has got a, a chance to get in behind that brown. He'd be playing it. Is it hard enough? No, he's mishit that completely because he wanted to have the yellow safe as well and you can't leave these sort of shots for Neil Robertson but we've seen him miss a few. He had a couple of chances to win this third frame. Can he take this one? He's not going to keep missing them. Two. Beautifully played that. Mm, clean as a whistle, wasn't it? Once again, right in the center of the pocket. Fabulous long pop. Five. Well, what a task now that faces Ronnie O'Sullivan. 24 ahead, the brown to make absolutely certain. One more frame before the mid-session interval, and Ronnie O'Sullivan badly needs it, because you never settle till you get your first frame on the board. And look at that for a pot. 14. Ronnie. 14 and puts his cue down. We're not blaming for leaving the arena. It's all Neil Robertson. Ronnie had a bit of a chance there, but the Australian now leads three frames to nil. Yeah, what a fascinating afternoon and I know that many of you at home and we've been hearing from you on social media, you've put work on hold, you've put the shopping on hold, the gym, everything, you're quite right as well. And an unusual situation, I don't think many of us would have predicted that, but when you look at Neil Robertson's long pot success, 10 out of 11, Ronnie is struggling today, Steve. Yes, he is. I mean, this is Ronnie on the ropes. Uh, you know, missing that black in the second frame would have shook him. Uh, nobody's immune to the pressure. Uh, we're so used to seeing Ronnie O'Sullivan cope with everything that's thrown at him. But you're only as good as your last match and even the one you're involved in. So it's fascinating in as much as how will he deal with it? How do you think he is going to be able to cope with this? Because there's been a lot made of his temperament and how really serene he's been. Nothing has seemed to phase him over the yeah. last few months, Ken. This is a proper examination of that. Yeah, it's a real test for him now. And it, 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 it'll be interesting to see how he copes with it. I mean, in the past, you know, it hasn't bothered him. Uh, gone a couple of frames down. But, uh, you know, just things aren't going right for him. You know, he, he missed the black. Even in that frame, he had a couple of chances to clear up and didn't take them. And he looks a little bit nervy out there. And just like positional, his positional play hasn't been up to scratch so far. Uh, and he's under a bit of pressure. He is indeed. And, and by contrast, Neil Robertson, so crisp, so precise and very decisive. You, OK, he's missed a couple, obviously. Yeah, but in terms of the way they've started, how do you assess the way he's been playing? Well, I think Neil Robertson's as well placed to beat Ronnie O'Sullivan as any player in the game because he's got attitude around the table. He struts around as if he owns it. And, and whilst psychologically the game you know, it doesn't necessarily play out, you, you know, the balls are what you're playing, you are aware of how your opponent looks around the table. And this is a big moment for O'Sullivan and indeed for world number one Neil Robertson. Yeah, you would have to say Ronnie definitely needs this frame to go to that mid-session interval, just one behind. He was very unlucky in that previous frame. He really was. <laughs> yes, 
Yeah, I mean, he, he was on his way to a lovely clearance, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan, in that previous frame. Potted a fabulous black here, but have a look where the cue ball finished. I mean, if he flicks the pink or flicks the green, he's perfect. He just flicked the green and left it awkward, and then bridging over the green, he missed the yellow. That was the one. Unlucky to finish there. Well, Neil played that double there, so presumably he played it. He didn't think this red would go, because why would you play the double if this red pot's in the green pocket? Hmm. I'm sorry, Neil. That's a mistake. Should not have been playing that double if he knew this was on. Fourteen. Fifteen. Just what Ronnie O'Sullivan needs here, three nil down. Good opportunity, a few balls in the open, chance to make one visit count. That's what he'd be thinking about. 18. Huge to be only two behind at the interval instead of four, that's for sure. 19. But I'm with you, John, that double that Neil took on. Can't believe it. He must have thought it was going to be safe, but he left that long red and... Uh, 26. He might be sitting there for a while now. 27. And look at the angle he's got to go into the bunch here. Sometimes Ronnie doesn't do that, but it's perfect to split the reds. He's got the other one there. It was always going to be available, regardless how he hit the reds. 34. Just managed 35. to miss the cannon, and he couldn't have played that any better. Beautifully controlled. Up the simple little shot, but look where he left it. Absolutely perfect. And he knows the importance of this, Ronnie. He stepped up a gear 40. here. His concentration and his focus look 41. totally different. It's not just a clear run to the winning post in this frame. I think there's one red still available before he has to disturb anything. One just to the right of that little pack of reds. And this 48. will free up the one that's to the left of it as we look at it. 49. But now he needs a nice little cannon here. Uh, it might be a little awkward this he can pot the red but he's going to cannon into the other two so 56. he's got to make sure he gets the top spin to get onto the black and he hasn't 57 maybe he can just get to the pink I'm not sure but he didn't get the required top spin to push through those two red but I think he's just okay here yeah tricky little shot this though you can see there bridging over and quite go through enough but Blind pocket, little tricky shot. Well, for near mortals anyway. Not only did he not drop it in, he played it off two cushions with check side and back down the table. 63. 64. What a well, shot that was, Dennis. 3-0 th down. And he knew if he missed that, he was going to leave Neil Robertson right in them. Neil Robinson took that double on. 
missed it, and that 72. was his only shot. Yep, it's getting warm out there now. 79. 80. Absolutely fabulous response. That's why the people pay the money and come through the door. Genius at work. 85. Well, there. Enjoying every 86. minute of this. We are in the commentary box. 92. Little pot red here. Flick the other one out over the middle. 92. 93. <laughs> Played to perfection and a chance for a century break. There's not many players in the game could respond like this, I can tell 98. you. 98. It's as good as it gets. 99. He's made 776 centuries, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Make that 777. 777. Yeah, and he's flying like one of them at the moment. Doesn't matter about the yellow. What a match we have on our hands now. It looked like me could win all four frames, but Ronnie, well, he could have had two of them, but what a century break to keep himself right in this match. It's 3 1 to the Australian. And in only seven minutes and 16 seconds, suddenly Ronnie O'Sullivan is back in the match, and that's how quickly he can turn things around. Yeah, Still well, got obviously a lot to do, Ken, but. Of course, yeah. Well, he answered the questions there, didn't he? You know, and. Uh, very strange shot from Neil Robertson, though, to let him in so cheaply, Steve. You know, like he played a double and left the red into the green pocket, but a great response from O'Sullivan. That's what he needed. That'll settle him down, and he'll certainly enjoy his cup of tea a little bit better after sure that. Very well, Steve. You've seen many a Masters semi-final. You've appeared in many a Masters mm -hmm. final, like this man beside you. But how does this occasion feel to you today? Uh, uh, there is a, sp a special buzz uh, for the whole day, I think, because both of these semi-finals, uh, nobody really knows the outcome. Nobody's really, yeah, you might have half a clue you suspect somebody's playing well, but every time you, you say that person's playing well, you can point to another player who's playing brilliantly as well. Um, getting back to that particular frame from Neil Robertson, uh, you know, not, he's not broken the unwritten rule because nobody's ever read it because it's not been <laughs> written down, but... If you've got somebody on the floor, you don't give them a hand to get up. And it's exactly what he's done there. I mean, whilst he's probably happy with 3-1, it could have been better. Yeah, could have been. All right. Um, well, there's so much to come from this match, so much to look forward to. Uh, Neil Robertson, of course, has already made history in snooker as the first man from outside the United Kingdom to complete snooker's triple crown. That's the Masters, the UK and the World Championship titles. In fact, there's only been nine in history who've ever done it. What's next for Neil? Well, simply to do it all over again. And he's been talking about the life and times of this particular Australian with John Parrott. So, Neil, what makes this Masters tournament such a special event for you? Um, well, I think, you know, first of all, watching it as a kid, you know, you're always watching all the very best players in the world play against each other. Um, it's exclusive to the top 16 in the world, so you know every match is, you know, almost worthy of a final in itself. So, I guess, you know, that adds so much to the tournament already. And I think that the fact that, you know, the general public and the crowds can go to every match knowing that they're going to see a top quality player play. Um, always, you know, the, the crowd's always really good as well. So, um, you know, especially playing at the Alexandra Palace, I think is, is, is a brilliant venue and, um, you know, it's is, is probably second to, to the Crucible. Now, you've had really good success here, obviously a winner in 2012, runner-up in 2013. What do you remember about those two finals? Um, the, uh, the first final, um, you know, I was playing Sean Murphy and um, I'd uh, come through a really tough part of the draw. I had um, Mark Allen, Mark Williams, I think was world number one at the time. They played Judd Trump in the semis. And um, yeah, so, you know, and then Sean in the final. So it was, it was a really tough path to the final. I played really, really well in the second session, I think, to go 9-3 um, up or something like that. And then, you know, Sean, as he always does, comes, comes back at you really strong. He, he starts going for everything and just everything hitting the back of the pocket. And, um, you know, he got it back to 9-6. And, um, yeah, I just had to keep my cool though. You know, I had to 
keep calm, wait for my chance because I'd been frozen out for three frames and uh, he, he left me a long red off a safety shot, I think, and um, I knocked it in and I made 70 odd to, to win the frame in the match. And, uh, you know, up until today, probably the best memories I've ever had after winning a tournament was having uh, Alexander there oh, yeah. with me when he came on. That was just absolutely incredible and, um, yeah, something that, you know, hopefully I can repeat this year. Well, what about the Selby final? What was, what was that about? We went into the first session, I was probably concentrating a little bit too much on trying not to watch him play. I think, you know, I kind of just read into uh, the belief that, you know, he can really put you off your game if, if you're sort of watching him play mm -hmm. because sometimes the frames can go really, really long. And so I was doing some really silly things like um, I was reading the, uh, the towel, the letters on the towel. I was trying to, I did what Ronnie Sullivan did a few years ago in the UK where Ronnie was counting the, um, uh, the number of um, indentations on a spoon. <laughs> And um, so I thought I'd try it, playing Mark Selby, and I was, I was reading letters on a towel, and I was, you know, the letter B, and I was thinking, come up with words that begin with B. I was saying banana and <laughs> bazooka. And for some reason, I just come, kept coming back to banana every time. And, um, and so when my shot, you know, when Mark would uh, play a safety shot or his visit would finish, I'd come to the table not really kind of switched on. Yeah. And it was just, it, I don't know why I did it, it was just a tactic to just try something different, to try and stay focused on my game. So I played really well, played really attacking fluent snooker to get to the final. I thought I had a bit of an advantage going into the, the second session, you know, with the momentum, but, um, you know, he, he maintained his sort of solid performance. He didn't give me anything, um, you know, played a lot of really good containing safety shots where, you know, he didn't really put me in trouble, but just kept playing safety shots mm -hmm. until I'd be the one to be the aggressor and make the mistake. And um, yeah, you know, he played nearly sort of perfect match play snooker and, and was by far the better player. Of the Is it fair to say you've sort of come under the radar in this event? Because you, I, I think you've played well in parts, but have you been as consistent as you could have been? Um, no, I don't think I've been consistent as last year. Last year I was making a lot of quarterfinals. Um, you know, I started last season the way, uh, same way I did this season, winning Wushu Classic, uh, final of Australia. But last year, my performances in the Euro Tours were much better. I was making quarterfinals, semifinals, a final. Um, so on paper, it looks as though I'm actually playing much better than maybe what I was. Um, the Euro Tours are very hard to gauge somebody's um, consistency or performances. I think yeah, you know, the best way to do it, especially for top players, is to see how they do in the big tournaments like the Champion Champions, you know, the UK yeah. Masters, these sort of tournaments, ones with the, you know, in particular, the one table set up, the big crowds, I think that's how you should truly gauge a, uh, a top player in the game. Now, there's much been mentioned about Peter Ebden and the, and the diet you're on. Is that for the benefits of just your health or for helping your snooker? Um, my choice to go on a plant-based diet was to try and not only improve my health, but also um, my snooker. You know, with the amount of travelling we do, um, especially when you, we go to China, um, you know, you do take the risk when you do, when you're eating some meat dishes out there. There are a number of players who always get food poisoning. <laughs> there's, always, there's always one or two unlucky players that do. And going on a plant-based diet, you, you, you basically take that out of the equation. And um, yeah, you know, I, 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 tried, I tried a diet for about two months before I tried the plant-based diet. And um, I must admit my results in the snooker were a bit negative probably uh, because of that. Um, but it was just experimenting, trying to get the edge, trying to prolong my career as much as possible. Um, you know, physical fitness and, and diet, I think, is going to be a huge part in snooker for, for many years now. I think it's already changed dramatically over the last five years, probably Ronnie being the first player to really take that to another level. Um, you know, Peter's still playing fantastic snooker and he's on a plant-based yeah. diet as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've been doing it for two months now. Um, probably this is the first tournament where I know what to expect every day. I know how much to eat every day. Yeah. I'm you know, really well prepared when I go away now. So, um, yeah, I'm in a really good spot with it now. And I think that um, young yeah, to start to produce my best snooker. Now, you mentioned Ronnie there. And of course, obviously, you've got him in the semi-final. Has he always been the benchmark for you, Neil? He, yeah, he's probably the one player I look at where I analyse a lot. What, about what he's doing, you know, the way he break builds, his positional play, um, how attacking his safety shots can can be. Um, yeah, so he, he's the one player that where I, I still sort of watch him play, and I, th I think I can learn a lot from. But I always enjoy playing him as well. You know, he's he's um, you know fantastic player to play. You're always playing in front of a big crowd. He's going to have the majority of the support, which which I completely understand. But yeah, I'm sure it'll be a brilliant atmosphere, and um, it'll be a challenge that I'm really looking forward to. Well, I did the commentary on your match against Ali Carter, and I don't think anyone's played better here this week. 
but that standard is probably what you're going to need against Ronnie, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think um, you know, in terms of the efficiency with my scoring, it was near enough one visit every time, uh, and my safety was was absolutely incredible. I think you know, I put Ali under all sorts of pressure. Ali's one of the best safety players the game's ever seen, and you know, I had him in a lot of trouble, and he, he didn't have many answers. So that's the sort of level I expect that will be required to beat Ronnie, and I'm confident that I can reproduce that kind of form. Okay, Neil. Thanks very much, and the best of luck. All right, cheers. Always great to listen to Neil Robertson. And what have we learned from that? Never think about bananas during a major <laughs> final. Uh, but he probably does think about them a lot now because of this vegan diet that he's on, plant-based. And we were seeing at the UK Championship, he'd only been on it for, what, a couple of weeks, and he genuinely did not seem to be adapting as quickly as he'd hoped. He looked weaker physically, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I mean, a bit like he sort of was eating his own bed straw, and that was all it was. <laughs> but um, I, I, I suppose, from his perspective, uh, uh, and for all the players, you, you, you do try different things. Mm. Um, it, it's not extreme these days. Plenty of people are, are, are going down that road. But uh, I don't know, if you go in the gym a lot, I think Neil Robertson does. Then perhaps you do need to make sure you're getting the right amount. But in saying that, he's, he's come here to the Masters and he looks so sleek, he looks yeah. so poised and athletic. Uh, it's clearly really working for him now, Ken. Yeah, I think psychologically as well, from a, as well as a healthy part. I think psychologically he feels better about himself. So that in turn can help your game, there's no doubt about it. If you feel good about yourself, uh, you know, it's, he's going to improve his snooker psychologically as well. So, yeah, but he looks good. He looks like the real deal. And you can tell he's quite meticulous and articulate in his preparation. Uh, but he's come here and he's playing really good snooker. And he's always had a swagger, but it seems to be exaggerated now, doesn't it? Uh, well, I think he's always been uh, very assured around the table. Uh, I don't think we've ever had moments where he's come out of a press conference with the negative views. I think he believes in his own ability. Mm. And perhaps that goes back to the fact that he, he came over here, you know, sort of paid his dues, uh, dropped off the tour, got back on again, that he's sort of got a very good sort of uh, vulnerability shield, uh, invulnerability shield around him, that uh, you can't hurt him as much as some of the other players. I don't necessarily think we're ever going to get him coming out and going up. Uh, you know, I, I really don't know where my game's gone. Mm. Uh, he seems better than that. Yeah, he's a very self-assured person, actually, and, uh, well, clearly has a, a very good lead in this one. But uh, turning our attention to tonight's other semi-final, you know, Mark Allen of Northern Ireland has been involved in uh, perhaps the best match this week, and that was against John Higgins, and also, ironically, the worst, which was against Joe Perry yesterday. And the world number six knows that he's going to have to dramatically improve against Sean Murphy, who was in absolute absolutely awesome form last night uh, in beating Stephen Maguire. Now, perhaps one or two little clues might come in their head-to-head -head record between one another. Uh, Murphy has emphatically had the better of it with uh, eight wins to Allen's two, but significantly, when it comes to semi-finals between these two, it's one victory apiece. So, what gives this evening? I came here to try my best and to make a good start to the you know the new year. I worked hard in the few days before I came to London and I'm very, very pleased to, to still be batting. There's been many times I've come here and played pretty well and got beat. You know, this, you're playing against top players in the world and that can happen. And I think one thing I do have is good ball. There's not too many matches that I've lost where I've thought, no, I've really you know, bottled it there and no should have won and missed an easy one. No. I've always been pretty happy with having that. It's a good thing to have in your locker. It's a um, very, very tough event, this. This is what the people come to watch. It's the best in the world, beating each other up. And anybody could come out the winner on Sunday. I just hope I'm in the shouting match, but you know, I've got Mark in, in the way at the moment. We've had some great matches over the years. Playing him in the semi is going to be a tough match. It's going to be very open. I'd be confident going into it, although I need to improve from my last match, but my recent record against Sean's pretty good. The thing you know about Mark Allen is that he will get better. He won't continue playing like that. So I, I have to take that into account. I know he's going to come out all guns blazing, or at least I have to prepare for that. But what can I do about it? Just make sure I prepare well, do my thing, play my shots as well as I can, and see who gets to six first. Well, let's get your take on this one this evening. Also something to really get our teeth into tonight. Uh, but Kent, how do you explain the differences in the form of Mark Allen between his first match against John Higgins and his quarter against Joe Perry? It's hard to, hard to believe. I was commentating on it with Dennis and we couldn't believe what we were watching. You know, I said to Dennis at one stage, get your cue out because you can't do any worse than the two <laughs> players. But 
the most important thing is to get to six for us, and that's what Mark Allen did. And every day, as we know, is completely different. And uh, he might come out tonight. He can't play any worse than he did against Joe Perry, uh, but he has got a lot of bottle, and he likes playing in the Masters. And I think his record here, he's lost about three or four, six fives to really top players, of course. And, uh, you know, it, it, they're always a good match between him and Sean Murphy. And I, I expect Mark Allen to be a completely different player than he was against Joe Perry. And it is amazing to think that uh, 12 months ago, at this very day, after being spanked 6-1 by Mark Selby, Sean Murphy was telling us he was thinking about doing something different with his life. And then, look at last night, you were commentating extraordinary stuff. Yeah, I mean, Sean Murphy played astonishing snooker last night. He was breathtaking. His potting was excellent. He's very assured around the table. Um, but what we obviously know is that that's no guarantee that it's going to go on into the next match. Um, but of the two players coming to the semi-final, obviously the track record is on Sean Murphy's side, that he's been to more finals. The questions are on Mark Allen. Can he beat the top players in the top arenas when it really matters? If you're going to see pressure on Mark Allen, it will be tonight but it's it's a mouth-watering prospect because they're different styles of player uh, and it's who can get the upper hand absolutely this is Mark Allen's second master semi-final and it's actually Sean's fourth in a row four consecutive years uh, now we'll be on here from seven o'clock on BBC two for full live coverage of that in fact you could probably spend the whole night with us on BBC Sport because at 10 25 obviously match of the day will be along over on BBC one it is even conceivable that you will have a choice between us and them by that point you just never know how things are going to go at Alexandra Palace. But back to this afternoon, that's the game in hand. Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan is appearing in his 11th Master semi-final. He's not lost a single one of his previous 10. But if he is going to equal Stephen Hendry's record of six titles, he's got a lot to do today. Technical. Ronnie O'Sullivan has one major advantage over his competitors. He plays the game both left and right handed to an amazing standard. He can get at shots where other players would have awkward queuing or need to use the rest. Nothing unusual about the way he grips the cue, but although it looks relatively firm, it's loose enough not to stifle the finesse he often utilises in his positional play. His feathering has a natural rhythm to it. It reminds me of the action of a top darts player setting up for the throw. The old parallel cueing theory is torn up by the rocket. With the butt of the cue relatively high in the air, Ronnie guarantees his smooth stroke is never cramped. Ronnie gets through the ball better than anyone else in the game. That means more action on the cue ball and a greater variety of shots available to him. Tactical. A break builder of breathtaking ability. He sees shots so quickly that he rarely breaks his stride around the table. This rhythm means he never has time to outthink himself and in a nutshell gives his natural ability every chance to take control. Safety is not the first word that comes to mind when you think of the rocket, but he is one of the best safety players in the game and is always safety with a purpose. Psychological Much has been made of Ronnie's mental approach to the game. Only he knows what is going on inside, but when he is in the right frame of mind to play, he has a rock-solid temperament. Perhaps the game comes so easily and naturally to him that it doesn't give him enough of a challenge. As far as weaknesses go, it's not a bad one to have. Stephen, Stephen, they do that so well, don't they? Well, we've had two centuries and two other 50-plus breaks in four frames so far. And uh, when you add up the sums, 
you'll see that Neil Robertson is halfway towards a third Masters final. Three more, he'll be there. What can the Rocket do to put things his way? Let's find out with John and Dennis. Thank you, Hazel. Um, both players uh, still look very relaxed. They were at the mid-session interval and can Ronnie continue where he Thank left you, off? Five. Ronnie O'Sullivan to pick. That's what they're playing for there, just disappearing out of your screen. And Ronnie with his traditional left-handed break-off shot. Just checking to see if he covered that one to the right corner. He's got the one to the left, but it's much more difficult. Yes, I think Neil can see this one on the right hand side, but the problem is that red that's behind the black doesn't afford him the opportunity of stunning it round without a cannon. So it'd be interesting to see whether he plays this just plain ball and tries to drop it in. I like that. Quite a good shot. One. <coughs> well, I'll tell you what, 10 out of 10 for the shot and also 10 out of 10 for the table fitter because that run perfectly true there. They can always drift off a little bit. I mentioned earlier the cloth was recovered. Pete Godwin, he certainly Eight. got that table level, that's for sure. Nine. Now, perfect angle here. Cannon into the pink. <coughs> Full ball with plenty of screw. And should splatter the reds. He's just looking to see how he wants to hit these and to make sure there's no plants on there in the middle of the pack and he doesn't knock one in the corner. But, well, this couldn't be nicer. Just needs a bit of luck off this. Well, he didn't get the pink full on as John suggested and he's slipped 14. right through the whole pack of reds there have a look at this he's found the the little gap rather than hitting the pink full on another long pot Yeah, not surprised he missed that. He was playing that with a, a load of check side there to make sure the cue ball didn't cannon the pack on the yep. way back. So over the distance of ground, a very tricky shot. Once it on, hits the cushion here, watch it check. Yeah, see it there away from the pack of red, so not surprised. Difficult shot that. But a good cue ball. What a pot he's pulled out there, and he's on the brown in such a way. He can go back to the reds. That's a shot of the match so far, that, you'd have to say. Well, believe you me, it was a good cue ball, but that was just a fantastic pot. <coughs> I bet you when Neil was sitting in his chair, they're thinking, well, that's not too bad. Five. Fully stretched, playing with his left hand. Just worried about flicking that red, isn't he, on the right hand side if he plays the follow through. He'll be trying to avoid that, so because of it, may screw back for blue instead. Mm. Hello. Ronnie O'Sullivan Well, five. he was stretched quite a ways there, and he was using his opposite hand, but he doesn't miss many with his left hand, but maybe just was stretching a little too far there. One. 
Yeah, good shot. Six. Use pace on the cue ball around the angles there. There was four little couplets of reds. They were all sort of lined up with each other there, so I had to split them up. And where he's finished, he's got, well, at least two reds, if not three, I can see he can pop. It's a matter of which way he sees it. Red on the right hand side he's looking at, well, he, of course he can pot this, but what's the cannon going to be like? Yeah, don't blame him for taking this one in the middle because at least he's got a good chance of controlling the cue ball a little better. Seven. again these reds are just not ideally placed and Sean has matched the other night with Ali Carter when the situations like this came up he managed to sort the problem out but they're all sort of lined up they're not absolutely perfect these reds not a choice you could Try and play on the loose one, or he's got an ideal angle off yellow or green to move a couple. So, see where he goes about it. And he's played on the bottom red on the black, beautifully struck. To get through that one. That white stopped and then spun back. It's worth another look. The white stops and then all of a sudden picks up pace. All timing that. But he's not rushing into things here because the reds are just slightly awkward, a lot of them covering each other, so he's just making absolutely sure. He looked at the possibility <coughs> of a plant as well into the middle pocket, so he's having a real good look around and doesn't want to just get down and play a careless positional shot. Yeah, he had a little look there. If he can get on the red that's just above the two, above the black, if he pots that and plays up for the blue, the two reds to the left will be open, so that's what he's tried to play on there. Red just above two above the black spot he's on that one up for the blue and hopefully 17. make a gap then those two reds on the left for the bottom one to pot and you see it once that one's gone the bottom 18. red now goes and it's actually off the brown perfect you can come down the left hand side and he's got options now so this is developing nicely Yeah, he's got quite a margin for error to finish on that red that John said. He, if he wishes to play on it, anywhere near the circle, he'd be on it. He's still OK. 22. Choice of reds he had there. Twenty-three. Yes, and now the other one goes, so well negotiated this all the time picking off the important red yeah he had that all worked out John because when he had a color and he played for the red that was behind the black 30 you know a lot of players would have played a cannon on the red but he knew he could bring these all into play without having to play a cannon 31. so he's certainly thinking well at the moment that's for sure <clears throat> yes and well I didn't think Ronnie had missed that. I know it was his left hand, but he's so proficient using it that way that it was a major mistake. He just got back down, didn't he? I could tell what he was thinking about. The first shot he was going to play wasn't quite on, so he just changed the shot he was going to play, and because of that, 36. just a little bit of concentration. 
and since then he's just sat and watched 37. and this has been fabulous like again cue ball control absolutely superb Forty three. Fifty. Yep, one mistake and the frame's over. That's what happened in the frame before the mid-session interval. Ronnie, Ronnie got one chance, made a century. And that's this frame gone now. 51. Fifty-eight. Well, Robertson, fifty-eight. Unexpected miss, but Ronnie stays in his seat. He just made that one mistake, and the Australian made enough points to win the frame. He now leads four frames to one. Yeah, it looked as if Ronnie was going to continue where he left off before the mid-session interval, and then. An unexpected miss. Okay, we're so used to seeing him switch hands, and he, he misses very little. He's, I mean, he's played the brown here, and he's probably wanted to just miss the blue, but the fact he cannoned the blue, he had to use his left hand. He was stretched a little bit, as you can see, but I, I never expected him to miss that, John. Yeah, as I say, I just think it was one of those. He got down first time, and he was going to play the run through, and then the cannon on the red on the right hand side had come into play so changed his mind and sometimes when you do that you don't quite prepare properly for the next shot and uh, I still thought he'd knock that in but such is the tough school he's playing in today the world number one punished him yeah he looks very cool calm and collected doesn't he Neil Robertson a lot of people coming back in they didn't make it after the mid-session interval so you're not allowed in while players on so they're all getting back into their seats and They'll be hoping that Ronnie can make a bit of a comeback here. So there's a long way to go. And when your opponent needs two frames, you always feel you're in with a chance. So this next frame coming up, John, is massive. Yeah, I think if Ronnie doesn't win it, he's in major trouble. I think 4-1 down to the way Robertson's playing is a problem anyway. But if he doesn't win this frame, I can't see a way back. Thank you. Frame six. Neil Robertson to break. It's a tough school, isn't it? Ronnie's made breaks of 63 and 101, and he's 4-1 behind. Neil Robertson's had a century, 66, 48 and 58. Yes, and the best break out of all of those was the 66 in the second frame because he didn't look like winning it. And to win with the clearance. When Ronnie missed the block off this block, how big was that in the context of the match? There is a safety shot here, but he might be able to sneak this in. In fact, he was so close to the pot, the red has stayed there. Now, if that black goes into the opposite corner pocket, we've seen in the previous frame, 
as we show you that, uh, well, it was a safety shot, but he almost potted the red, which he was trying. But in the previous frame, Neil Robertson knocked a long red in and finished on the black. And he's done it again. One. Just looks in total control. Every long pot not only seems to find the middle of the pocket, but his cue ball control is exemplary. I was a little worried for him whether he could reproduce Eight. the stand that he produced the other night. I need no worried. Nine. He's hitting the ball beautifully, <coughs> as good as I've seen him hit it for a long time. And Ronnie O'Sullivan isn't playing badly, he's just not being allowed to play. I was just thinking there, John, he's not rushing into it. He's working out and weighing up the situation and he's playing all the correct shots, isn't he? Yeah, he's got a chance to go into the pack again. He missed the pink last time and full in the face hit it, but not how he wanted. But he got it that time. Hmm. Well, at first look, it could have come out 28. a lot better than that. Might not be on anything. Now he hit it perfectly this time, but they're all blocking each other. You can see them spreading around the table there, but they're all covering each other. So this time he hasn't had a good run of the ball. Yeah, now he's got the quandary. Oh, hang on. That's tight. As we zoom in, there's only half a pocket there. Yeah, just to say he's got the quandary of... How to play a safety shot as well if there's no pot available because the Reds have been open far and wide there. Yeah, the Red is worried about leaving as the one to the left of the pink if he plays up into the safety area of the table up near. The ball colours there. He could leave that on. So he's taking the pot on. Neil Robertson, 28. But he knew that these reds were all covering each other. Okay, the one he missed is ran safe. Ronnie spotted one that will go in the corner. Well, that's tight as well. If you were right in behind that red, it would be a better proposition, but not from where he is. That's the one he's got to cover, the one to the left of the pink. Tough shot coming up, no matter what he picks. Difficult to see a, 
This is the player view, but difficult to see a path down to the bulk line. Don't blame him taking a bit of time on this. Could go wrong this. Hard shot. Uh, look at the length on the cue ball here. Ronnie came and tapped the table there because he knew he was going to leave some sort of pot into this right corner, but 87% with his safety success rate as well. He was up at 93, uh, Neil Robertson, with his pot success rate. This is tough. That was very tough. And that could be costly. That was a very difficult yeah. shot he was faced with there. <coughs> yes, he was under severe pressure there, 4 1 down to the world number one, playing exceptionally well. Shot really, you just knew you had to knock one. in. Six. Yes, good chance and seven. Obviously, pink right back on its spot as soon as possible. Already thirty-five point lead. So I don't expect Neil Robertson the way he's played today to make a mistake from here. Thirteen. Yeah, he's missed precious little from this match. The world number one. Nineteen. Already forty seven the difference now. Um, plenty of choices. Twenty. Shouldn't be a problem. He can put the white in the position here. He leave a red to the left middle and a red to the left corner. Just watch where the cue ball finishes here. Would have liked to have been a little bit closer to them, but shouldn't be a problem. Back for the blue again. 24. Didn't quite get that as he intended. Slightly the wrong side of the blue. Mm, yeah, first sort of positional slip in this particular break. Everything else has been spot on, but as you can see, wrong side of the blue. So just looking as a left hander, it's not the worst thing from where he was queuing up there. Could, of course, power it round and try and go around the angles as the choice, and he's got plenty of cue power. He certainly has. He's going to come up a little bit short, though. 29. Thin cut to the middle pocket. Quick glance at the scoreboard to see how many more pots he needs to get himself 5-1 in front. A red colour, red needed. <laughs> Good 
Ronnie Robertson, 29. Yeah, I think Ronnie thought this frame had slipped away, but uh, Neil ran out of position a couple of shots ago, and uh, he didn't get that one in the jaws. That's a clever shot, bringing that black out into play, and look at the cue ball. So he's got a bit of a chance here, Ronnie, if he can get to the table, that is, with that chance. Yeah, excellent shot there, beautifully controlled, and as you say, black in play, so putting a bit of pressure on Neil Robertson in this particular return. That's what he's got to do, try and force a mistake, because Neil, even when he misses, he's not really sticking Ronnie in amongst the balls to score, so it's been a tough afternoon for O'Sullivan. Keeps going. Well, I think he's left one pot. He'd like to have been on the one that's just closest to the pink, but he can't see that. But he can get through to the other one. Um, for the first time, I've seen Ronnie. Well, that's a couple of shots he's missed. Uh, but even the greatest players in the game can feel a bit of pressure. He's 4-1 down to the world's number one. One. <laughs> Absolutely amazing how he's got in behind the red, so... Once again, when I seen the red go in, I thought, well, that's the end of frame, but look what that cannon did. Well, that is desperately unlucky. Because he's going to say ball colour of some nature, and he's going to keep having to play it until he hits it, because well, there's no way he's going to play off the cushion and play for pink or black and leave the cue ball up here, so how do you get out of this one? Yeah, Ronnie might get a few points from this situation. Uh, how many cushions is he going to have to have? You're going to have to one, two, at least three cushions. Yeah. And brown that's the brown that he's nominated, so... He You've got to be very precise with this. Yellow. <laughs> Changed his mind, said yellow. Oh, miss. <laughs> they were from one. Don't know what they for. Worth the try, wasn't it? Well, I want to hear what he's going to nominate this time. Is he going to find the same line and nominate the yellow? He can change yellow his ball. mind. He doesn't have to uh, play the brown. Can he remember the line he took? Yellow book. He's now nominated the yellow. <laughs> Hope he doesn't hit the brown. That's another four points. And as John mentioned, wow. miss. he'll have to keep playing it because Running there's an easy four. escape to the pink. But he wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Money. Yellow again, yellow book. It looks good this time. <clears throat> Big shot coming up here. Can stun the white with the black bean over the middle. Thought he could, but played a deep screw. Yeah, 
Yeah, unusual for Ronnie to play it. He nearly knocked the black him, but to play it in such a way, he had a bit of safety in mind as well. The shot you mentioned, John, he would have been on the black, but he's probably lacking a little bit of confidence. Now, where's this red going to finish? He tried a double in the frame before the mid-session interval, and Ronnie made a century break. He tried another double there, but that wasn't as risky. Uh, just lost it a little bit at the moment. It's quite understandable. He's been put under extreme pressure. He is, but he keeps getting left smelly little shots as well. That was really awkward. That was a horrible little cut in the middle pocket. So it's not always been easy for him when he's come to the table. Well, I thought that was a nice pot he'd been left, but that's horrible. Tighten the side cushion, back cut. Not easy. Now, if this red keeps running, he's going to leave it. And it has. This is a better chance. No. He's just lost his way at the moment, has Ronnie. Very unusual, but, you know, it just shows you when your opponent puts you under extreme pressure, what can be missed. Hello? Oh. What's going on here? Well, I'm just about to say, I think the Australian's got his man, and he went and did that. Settle down, please. Thank you. Well, you can't get any closer than that. I mean... Only the pace kept that red out. It wobbled about four times in the jaws of the pocket. One. Now it might just be in the end for Ronnie. He's got to just go out and have a go now because it's certainly going to be 5-1 but we've seen him in the past where he can knock in two or three centuries in no time at all he's going to have to call on all his reserves now as the defending Eight. champion you're looking at a man here that's uh, Nine. just one frame away from his third final in four years. He won it in 2012. Yes, and he's always, he's also a man, Dennis, who doesn't quiver at the prospect of getting over the line either. So Ronnie's not a, only got to play as good as he can possibly play. He's going 13. to need Neil Robertson to all of a sudden not play properly, and that doesn't look like happening. He doesn't know how to win a match, the Australian. Well, we've had more shots missed in, the frame. in this frame <laughs> than in the whole match. But in the end, the Australian took the frame and he now leads 5 1. He just needs one more to get into another final. And we saw quite a few uh, missed shots from the rocket there. In fact, it's now nearly half an hour since he potted a ball in this match. And clearly, he's really on the ropes now. He seems to have gone right off the boil. Yeah, I mean, like, nobody's immune from a bad day in the office. But we get so used to Ronnie O'Sullivan always producing. It's sort of like a little bit of an anticlimax when it doesn't happen. But you know, it just proves that uh, you know, he, he is as, he's more human than we thought. Um, but he, his problem started in frame two when he missed the black off a spot and went into the reds. Uh, and then, obviously, Neil Robertson made him pay, pay for that by clearing the balls. And then it's just been worse and worse for him. 
There is a real layer of resignation about him now, and Ken, looking back through the, the record books, uh, the last time that he suffered a situation like this was ironically against Neil Roberts, and it was in the 2010 World Open final. Neil beat him 5-1, and he really hasn't had a going over like this in all these years wow. since. It's, and it's surprising, you know. I mean, uh, particularly in that last frame. I mean, the red over the hole. It was being a comedy of errors from him, and uh, a look of resignation with some of the pots that he actually took on. Uh, quite difficult ones, trying to screw back into ball. Uh, and he's since that second frame was so important, missing that straightforward black off the spot to secure the frame, going into the pack. Since then, he's been ill at ease out there. I know he made a century in frame four, but you know he's just his safety, concentration as well, and just some of the missed pots that you would normally come to expect from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Let's see it from Neil Robertson's perspective because this has been a thoroughly, thoroughly impressive performance so far. It has. I mean, he tried his best actually in that frame to to get back, Ronnie back in yeah. it. Not, not obviously he didn't, but I mean, uh, he, you know, the finishing line is in prospect, and he knows full well he's got him. Yeah, you know, it, it's just he's still got to he's still got to deliver the the final killer blow. But with a five-one lead, he's got so much room for manoeuvre now, uh, and, and he obviously knows that Ronnie's you know not feeling that great out there. He'll have he'll have felt that, uh, and Ronnie does look as resigned to losing as I think we've ever seen him. Having said that. If anybody could find a spark of inspiration and dig himself out of a hole, uh, but perhaps he would, he should take uh, heed of what happened uh, to Judd Trump UK in the UK final, Championship. Yeah. Judd pulled it out of the bag, so Ronnie can. Yes, he can, and uh, you're absolutely right. What was it? Four or five frames in a row, Judd managed in only 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> It's, it's a big, big ask for him now, particularly as John Parrott makes a very good point that this man, and Neil Robertson as he walks in, has been such a clinical finisher yeah. of matches. In yeah, and he, as he said, he won't quiver at the Thank prospect you, of, of seeing the match out. But if Ronnie can you know, reel off a couple of quick frames with, with sort of big breaks, who knows? It's never over until it's over. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ken. We've seen that in the uh, final of the UK Championship when Ronnie led 9-4 against Judd Trump. And Judd came right back, making back-to-back -back centuries. But that's what Ronnie has to produce here. Can he? That's the question. It was interesting, Ronnie stayed in the arena there, and Neil Robertson was out for almost three minutes. Pink and black still tied up at the moment here. We've seen a couple of good safety exchanges. Yeah, just a little worried with the red he's going to contact on the side of the pack here, whether he doesn't flick one over towards the, the left corner. That's what he was having a look at. So he decided to play it thicker. Take that red across and back over. <coughs> Both players playing some superb safety shots here. the tournament safety success rate and there's not much between them 83 and 84 percent he's fluked it 
one. Well, he had a bit of good luck fluking the red, a bit of bad luck canning the blue. That was his first pot, believe it or not, for 32 minutes. You heard Hazel in the studio mention that. on the pink Five. might just be a... yep he obviously can just about see enough of it hmm pretty tight though isn't it This is such a good shot. Awkward bridging, but he held the spot. Look where the pink is. 12. That was about the best he could do there, trying to get himself through the reds and leave the pink that is now on the blue spot. Mm. This is no gimme. Make sure it doesn't can on a ball colour. Or the blue. Hmm, I think he's okay for this red on the right hand side, 18. but he's just scrapping for position at the minute. It was a very awkward chance this. And it still is. Well that was a little unlucky. He tried to flick that black over the corner pocket, so he's Having to work really hard, as John said. Um, when you're disappointment 90. in the audience there, but that wasn't an easy shot to knock the yellow in. But not only knock the yellow in, he had to get onto a red, which he didn't manage to do, so everything's safe. He's got a 19 point advantage. Look at that again. Another example of wonderful cue ball control there. Immaculate safety player Neil Robertson. Would require some money as well. <coughs> Is this a Neil Robertson special coming up? I mean, he kept his head so still there and delivered that cue in a straight line. That was a terrific pot there. Shh. Yeah, see the match shot beautifully cued straight through the ball. Right in the centre of the pocket again. Seven. Yeah, it'll take some stopping on this form if he gets over the line here. <clears throat> yeah, a little awkward. Rather like a frame earlier in the, the match today. Those sort of three couplets of reds there are not potting anywhere, so they're awkward. Red just to the right of the black as well. That one there's 
ball could forget him on the black, so I don't blame him for taking a bit of time thinking about this. Okay. have played each other 13 times in Ronnie <coughs> leading 9-4. They've only played each other in the Masters on one occasion and Ronnie won that 6-4. 14. So Neil is well on his way to revenge that defeat. 15. Oh, clever way to play that. Played that shot with a little bit of run inside, so when I hit the cushion it sprung out. He was either going to have green or pink. And watch the cue ball here when he plays this. A little bit of left on it, you see it just flick up. That's the art of break making. Give yourself options. If you're not perfect on one, you can be on the other. Almost clinical, this. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Once again, played in an area there. Wasn't quite on the pink. He could be on that green, which could have come in pretty handy. A little stun across. Got two reds he could be on here. Just immaculate. Fabulous cue ball control. 35. Thirty-six. Hmm. And the first semblance of a mistake. Didn't want the flick on the red. Played up and down in between there, but come off the cushion and just flick that red on the right. Took the pace out of the ball. Yeah, he hasn't rushed things this afternoon. He's weighed up the situation and he's missed precious little. And look at that, right in the centre of the pocket again with that green. It really is awesome match play snooker 39. you're watching here from the Australian. 40. Yes, and I mentioned earlier, Dennis, that he's not one of those players, Robertson, when he sees the winning line, he's frightened to push through it. He's seen this as a chance to get over the line, and he's taken it with both hands. And shot by shot, Stephen Hendry's record of six 46. Masters is going to stay intact for at least one more year, you would say. Ronnie was looking for his sixth Masters title, but it has to be said, 47. he's run into the world number one at the top of his game. He's missed a few, but he didn't miss that many early on. 
that big turning point we keep saying when he made the 63 break in the second frame and Neil pinched it off and Ronnie missed the black off the spot that was the big turning point you'd have to say Yes, and Robertson, his form since he was 4-3 down to Robert Milkins in the first round has been absolutely awesome. Against Ali Carter, well, it was flawless. You can't play any better. Match play was incredible. Safety was brilliant. And his scoring, uh, astounding that night. And today, he showed what a brilliant competitor he is and why he's world number one. If you can play a session of snooker and stop Ronnie O'Sullivan potting the ball for 32 minutes, some part of the game, you're doing a, your job properly. He's going to need one of those reds that are to the right of the black. I think the red won't pass the black, so he'll have to leave it for the same pocket that he's taking this one. And he's got an angle 54. on the pink to stun in behind that. Just a delicate little shot, and he can leave himself on that red. If he doesn't play the cannon them out, he'd have to leave it in the circle there. He's come up a bit short, so it's not going to be a straightforward pot to clinch the match. 60. Another few inches with that cue ball, and he could have rolled the red into the corner to secure the semi final. Neil Robertson, 60. Yeah, he didn't win it with that visit, but a fabulous break of 60. And once again, pressure on Ronnie to return with a good safety. Well, that Five. means he now needs a snooker. Neil Robertson, four. And the fact that he's missed the red. <laughs> 45 the difference, just 43 on the table. So Ronnie needing one snooker now. And he's hit that much too thick, that could be the end. Yeah, that definitely is the end of this year's Masters for Ronnie. One. So when it goes, and he can have no real complaints today, Ronnie. He's just been something we never really say about him. He's been <clears> outplayed. And that's all credit to his opponents, the world number one, Seven. Australian Neil Robertson, who's been top draw. Well, that's not a bad shot. Eight. Yeah, finishing in style here. <coughs> and a packed 12. house at the Alexander Palace. And we thought we might have a classic on our hands here, but it doesn't oh, matter about the white going in. Ronnie four, comes forward to shoot the world yeah, yeah. number one's hand and congratulate him. Nice to see well, that. Well but this afternoon, Neil Robertson was awesome. And the world number one goes through to the final. His third final in four years. A very comfortable winner. Six frames to one. It's Neil Robertson into a third Masters final since 2012. In four years, that's his young son Alexander, who was here when he won that final in 2012 against Sean Murphy to win his first Masters title. And I'm sure the wee fella is absolutely delighted. But the defending champion is out, and in quite some style. Uh, it's not often that we see Ronnie O'Sullivan taken apart that, like that, Steve. Yeah, it obviously requires a level of standard that Neil Robertson's produced, but I think spare a thought for Ronnie, he's produced so much good stuff over a number of years that you know, he can't keep on doing exactly. it time after time. It's a relentless standard he has produced, so, you know, he can't always be at his brilliant best, and, you know, perhaps he needs one of those every now and again just to sort of refocus. And it's, it's also important to point out that he actually hasn't been beaten since November. He's had this incredible run through the Champion of Champions, the UK, and as he said, it had to end sometime. Yeah, it did, yeah, but... Uh, 
sublime performance by Neil Robertson. It really was. And oh. uh, I, he beat him in every every department and well, well played. Fantastic. Congratulations, Neil. Hello, Alexander. How are you? It's been a while since we were playing Star Wars together, hasn't it? Um, a performance befitting your world number one status. How much pleasure does that give you today, Neil? Um, yeah, look, I, you know, overall really happy with the way I played. Uh, you know. Sorry. I'm... How do you think Daddy played, buddy? That play good? Yeah. yeah? Pretty, pretty well. If you're not doing a ventriloquist. Yeah, you know, I think Ronnie was just struggling with his tip a little bit, but um, you yeah, know, I also put him under a lot of pressure early on. Um, and that was the key to the match. I had to keep the pressure on when he was making mistakes. I had to capitalise. Second frame after he missed a surprising miss on the black, to, uh, then you made a very, very good clearance. To uh, it wasn't it wasn't a certain clear, was it? In the second frame. Yeah, that that was that that was the, the key moment in the match. You know, forget the other things that sort of happened later on because um, you know he never really seemed to sort of settle. And even though he made the centre at three one, big difference between one all and three one. And um, yeah, he just I don't know took his eye off the black and uh, yeah made a really good clearance. And Neil, it's obviously, it's a great record you got in this event. You're through to your third final in four years. Who's it going to be, Sean Murphy or Mark Allen tonight? Yeah, I mean, you know, I watched a bit of the match with, with Joe. Obviously, I had a lot of interest in Joe and Mark Allen's match. But, um, yeah, I mean, either way, both are fantastic players. Both never won this tournament before, so they're going to be very hungry, you know, to, to, to get a win in the final. And tell me about Christmas and tell me about this fellow over Christmas. <laughs> uh, yeah, we went to Norway for Christmas, minus 22. We played in the snow, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, it was great fun. It was, um, you know, really special for him. And uh, yeah, we've both got our energy back. And uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's good to start the new year. And how's this cue action, by the way? Yeah, it's not too bad. He, he's more interested in um, playing with uh, playing with toys and uh, Power Rangers and things like that at the moment. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll get a cue in his hand soon. <laughs> a lightsaber, I remember absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's been absolutely amazing. The fantastic performance, two peak performances. We were talking about how difficult it is to follow up a, a performance against Ali Carter, but you've done it today get some rest get some respite and we'll look forward to seeing you neil and indeed alexander okay. in the, the final tomorrow <laughs> well, night all right cheers thanks, thanks very much great. thank you great. all right well uh, ronnie is uh, is out our defending champion his winning streak has come to an end it had to end sometime and it's done it in some style from this man neil robertson he is through to as we say his third final in four years um and this man's nicknamed the thunder from down under my goodness, it was loud and clear today. We'll see you at 7 o'clock for our second semi-final. It's uh, Murphy against Allen. Catch you then. In the meantime, good afternoon. Bye-bye.